So today let's have a look at uh, wireless keys, replay attacks and rolling codes. First let's have a basic understanding of a replay attack and I will use my flipper to demonstrate this. A replay attack is when you are using a device such as the flipper to record a wireless signal and then to replay the same signal to emulate a key and then to open devices that you will not normally have access to. Does this mean that anyone with a flipper could get access to my carport or my car? Well, according to many videos out there on YouTube, it seems like that is the case, but I would say that that's maybe just half of the truth. Let's first have a look at a basic replay attack. Let's use this remote control for controlling lights in my house. This is um, just like a switch on and off. Uh, and let's record the signal. The flipper, go into the sub uh, gigahertz, select read raw, make sure that the frequency is correct. Uh, my remote have 433.92. I'll select that, go back and then into record. Let's press the button and see. One, two, three. I'm pressing the same button and you can see the signal is the same each time. So that is because it's the static code and this is how it works as a lightning switch, pressing it on, it switch on the light and off, the lights go off again. Let's try to record this uh, on the flipper. On, off. I'll stop it. Now let's try to replay this or to send it on, off. Let's try to do the same thing with this remote control for my carport. Let's go into the flipper, start recording. And when I press the button on the remote, one, two, three, four. Here we can see that the signals are actually quite different each time. It's not sophisticated enough, this uh, flipper, to actually show the details, but uh, you can see actually that the signals are a bit different each time the button is pressed. But let's try to record a proper signal and to replay it before my carport. Here we have it. I'll press save and let's give it a logical name like carport CP1. And now let's move towards my carport and try to replay it. Let's try to run CP1 and you can see my carport behind. Carport 1 running. Send. And yeah, it actually opens the door, which is a good thing. Now I'm closing it again, just pressing my button. So let's see here, let's try to run carport 1 once more. No, it doesn't work because that code has been used. So let's go back to uh, some other ones. Let's use uh, CP2, which is here. This has not been used. Trying again to send that, send. Yeah, uh, that also works because that was also a new code. So a very simplified sketch explaining rolling codes. Let's say that the sender and the receiver will agree on some kind of common key. In this example, I'll just have the sequence number starting with one, two, three, and so on as the N. You multiply that with pi and you multiply with 100. This is of course way more complicated in the real life, but this is just to explain the principle. So the sender will send the first code that is one times pi times 100. 314 is the result that's being sent to the receiver. The receiver is actually expecting the same because they have the same common key and the same kind of algorithm. So that's a match, it will open the door. The next expected code is 2 times pi times 100. So that is exactly what is being sent by the sender because it's have the, it has the same uh, algorithm. 2 times pi times 100, that equals 628 that is being sent over. It's a match to the expected result and it will open the door. So what if you are 
listening and intercepting on that call being sent using your flipper so you, you will actually record 628 well you can try to replay and send that using your flipper but that is not accepted because that code has been used so rolling codes is actually a very good thing to secure the communication between a sender and a receiver in this kind of context but you should also be aware that such a system is still vulnerable for something called replay and signal jamming attack so that means that you need a signal jammer so when pressing uh, the button at the sender sending code one uh, sorry three one four it is stopped by the signal jammer but you can still record it on your recording device so yeah the re receiver is expecting that code but it it didn't re receive anything so what will happen from a, a user context uh, perspective yeah the sender will kind of press the button again and it will send the next code which is six two eight that is also stopped by the signal jammer and is also recorded by your recording device. Now you will stop uh, the signal jammer and the replay device could send the first code again, 314. That code is received by the receiver and it meets the expectations and it will open the door. And at this point, the next expected code from the receiver side is of course two times pi times 100. And this is kind of the tricky part and the vulnerable thing of this kind of system. That is actually the, thing, the code that you already have stored on your recorded device. That's an unused code and it could be used then to attack the system and open the door in kind of an uh, unauthorized way. As a conclusion, I think we could say that, yeah, the flipper can replace your remotes in your house for lights and so on, but you cannot use your flipper to emulate and replace your car port key because that's using rolling codes. And as we have seen, uh, the rolling codes have some vulnerabilities as well, but probably not a threat by using a flipper. So I don't think you need to be worried about people having flippers to open your cars or your carport doors. But you should be aware of when you're closing and opening your door that it is actually responding. Because if it's not responding, it could be somebody there with a signal jammer and record your codes that could be replayed later. Mm -hmm.